so approximate integration. This is what we know uh, to do so far. We know, well, what we're trying to do is uh, we want to, the goal, approximate the definite integral, uh, let's say from A to B, of f of x dx. And I said this is important because uh, there are more function f of x that are not elementary function. In other words, there are more function out there that we cannot integrate than the function that we can integrate. And the typical example would be the integral of e to the x squared dx. Uh, although last time when we, we uh, went over it, we chose the integral of 1 over x dx, and we, we know how to calculate it exactly. This allows us to compare the approximation to the exact value. Uh, and this, these are the techniques that are uh, available to us. Uh, we have the first technique was, the first two techniques were the left-hand sum or the left-hand point sum and the right-hand point sum, which we denoted as L sub n and n indicate the number of subintervals, and we say that the left end point will be the sum uh, where we let i, the index i, goes from 1 to n of f of x sub i minus 1. We go to the left end point of each interval, and then we multiply it by the width delta x, where delta x equals the difference between the end point a and b divide by the number of subintervals n. Okay? The next technique was the uh, right end point. Again, the sum from 1 to n. And here we take f of x sub i. In other words, on the interval that bounded by x sub i minus 1 and x sub i, uh, then we choose the right hand side. For instance, if i equals 2, then we are looking at, uh, in the left hand sum, we'll take i x1, in the right hand sum, we'll take x2, x sub 2. Okay. Again, delta x is the same. I think delta x will be the same for all techniques here. Um, and then, <coughs> we didn't discuss the uh, error bounds for these two techniques as we did with the midpoint and trapezoidal. But if you want to know uh, the error is determined by the first derivative. And you can, maybe later in the semester we look how to develop the error bounds. But I'll give you the error bounds for the next two techniques. In, and the next technique, number three, was the midpoint. So m sub n, the midpoint, and the midpoint, we calculate or we approximate the integral by taking the sum from 1 to n of f of x bar sub i, where x bar sub i is the average value. So we're going to say that x bar sub i will be one half the sum of the value to the left, which is i minus 1, and the value to the right, which is i. So again, if we are looking at the second, at the interval between x sub uh, 1 and x sub 2, then uh, x bar will be the average of x1 and x2, if i equals 2 in this case. And here we discuss the, uh, the, how big the error can be here, what we call the error bound. And we gave it a name said E sub M, the error bound correspond to this technique, the midpoint, is limited. I mean, the biggest value will be K times B minus A cube over 24N squared. Okay? And how we get to K? Well, K will be the upper or the biggest possible value for the second derivative of x. So over the interval from a to b, 
Remember, we're looking at the interval from A to B. We're going to check uh, to see what is the biggest value of F double prime. And we take that value and say this will be K. And it will be in the numerator. So if you look at the error bounds, you can see what effect the error, right? As K is bigger, so is the error. And what is K? K is the value of the second derivative. You remember from Calc 1 that the second derivative is associated with the concavity of the function. So the more concave, the more the function is concave, then you expect K to be larger. The less concavity, meaning that the function is relatively flat, and the error will be smaller because the K value will be smaller, which tends to reason. So uh, that's one thing. The other thing, we see that N squared is in the denominator. So the bigger value of N, the less the error. And you can see that because it's N squared, it has this square factor. For instance, if we double N by 2, then we it decrease the error by 4. Okay? If we increase the number of n by 10, then we decrease the error by 100. Go ahead, Josh. Uh, I'm sorry? It's cube, yeah. It's supposed to be cube. It's a one order greater than the denominator. Okay? I, yeah, I think last time I, uh, I omitted the power here. Go ahead. Tommy. I'm sorry? Yes. Yes. It is important, for instance, uh, yesterday we looked at the function 1 over x, the integral of 1 over x from 1 to 2. What, we know what is the exact value. So we know exactly how far we off. But if you integrate a function that is not elementary, and I give you an example, e to the x squared, we, we don't know what is the exact value of the integral from 1 to 2 of e to the x squared dx because we don't know how to integrate this function. It's not an elementary function. So we go and use it approximation. We can use uh, several techniques, but it's very important to be able to estimate how good is the approximation. And that's where the error bound becomes important. Because you know that no matter what you calculate, the error cannot exceed this value that calculated here. Then you, did, you made a mistake in the approximation, the way you calculate the approximation. But, but how do you know that it exceeds? If you don't know the exact value, how would you know what is the actual error? You really don't know. You know what is the possible biggest error. You see what I'm saying? You, you are flying blind when you cannot, when you're dealing with non-elementary uh, function or integration of non-elementary. More so, what happens if you integrate data? I told you that that's more likely as future engineer or scientist. A lot of the time you'll have to integrate data. You don't even have a function to begin with. So you integrate, you come up with an approximated value. How do you know how accurate you are? Well, you need to have a, a way to estimate the error. We'll address that later in the semester on a number of occasions. Uh, uh, we're going to look at different ways to estimate the error. But if you go on to graduate school and start doing research, you're going to see more and more how important is uh, the need to uh, analyze what is the the error in our calculation or in our statistics, for instance. If you do the statistics, that also, you know, you estimate something, but you need to know how accurate is this estimate. Is this like a deviation? In statistics, the deviation tell you how far is the, the, the actual values can, can possibly be from, from the predicted value or the percentage of uh, or what percent of the of the result would be within, uh, say, 67% of of the of 
of the data. So that, that would be plus minus one star deviation. This is different. This is different. Um, there is some relation between integration and, and standard deviation if you look at uh, the, the, uh, the formal definition. Okay. Um, let's talk about the, uh, the last technique, which was the trape trapezoidal technique. In this case, we, we're going to use the letter a T for trapezoidal rule. And here, we are not going to use the sigma because if you remember, the coefficients are 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, and 1 at the end. So it goes like this. We'll take delta x and divide by 2. And here, we're going to add a function. So we start at x sub 1, and we have... This would be 1 times f of x sub 1, but at this point, we're going to multiply every function by 2. So 2 times f of x sub 2, 2 times f of x sub 3, like so, and then we'll go on and until we get to 2 times f of x sub n minus 1, the one, the one before last, and we go back to 1 times f of x sub n the last value. So we can see that the first and the last values are multiplied by 1, but everything in between is multiplied by 2. The other thing to notice here, we have n is the number of sub-intervals, but how many entries we have in the, in the bracket? Because we take, we start with x sub 1, the leftmost value, we end up with x sub n, the rightmost value, it means that the total elements here will be n plus 1, or the total terms, will have n plus 1 terms. For instance, if we choose n to equal 5, then we need to add 6. Every, before that, in, in L sub n, R sub n, and M sub n, uh, if we use n equals 5, then we add five terms, right? But here we'll add five plus one. If n equals 10, then we'll add 11. What about the error in this case? The error is a little bit less uh, accurate, or we have greater error than in the midpoint. And basically, it's calculated in a very similar manner, k times b minus a, cube, again a cube, I may have omitted that last time, but we divide by 12 uh, times n squared. Again, k is bounded by, or k is the bound for the second derivative. So we, we found the same k, everything is the same, and we notice that uh, if, if, uh, if you recall, uh, last time I gave you a list of obs observations, and one of the observations was that the midpoint uh, approximation is twice as good, or the error in the midpoint approximation is half of the error in the trapezoidal, and you can see why, because here we divide by 24, and here we divide by 12. Okay? The fifth uh, technique will come a little bit later, but at this point I want to give you an example. <clears throat>